Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. And Lancaster Insurance cover the Furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and this is the beginning of the Festival of the Unexceptional 2023. It is only 9.25 in the morning, the gates have barely opened and already this field is filling up with some of the rarest cars you will ever see. So let's start having a quick walk around because honestly there is some incredible stuff already. Turn up in the morning, there's a Mark 1 Monday on an M plate that's pretty early and it's a GLX next to a G plate Sierra Sapphire, I think it's an L chap said. So already exciting stuff right next to us. Followed Steph from iDriver Classic into the car park, which was always good. And of course, a little Punto, the oldest Punto in Britain. One of eight surviving 1994 cars, apparently. And this car was at our meet down at um, Horsham a couple of months ago. So this is lot 76 cars. We'll come and have a chat with them later on. And of course, a Triumph Acclaim. A review of a Triumph Acclaim is actually, actually on the channel from a few months ago. So we're ready. First row, stunning stuff. This is going to be an amazing video. I was going to do a proper walk around and try and stop and chat to the owners, but people are just vanishing already because there's so much to look at. You might say NMX5 is not exceptional, unexceptional because they are so good, but Mark 1s are getting a little bit rare now. Lots of fun. This one looks ratty enough to be unexceptional. It's even got leather seats in it. You may remember we rescued a Fiesta just like this. Oh, about two years ago now. It's found in a hedge. We fixed it up and got it going for someone. That was a fun little car to drive. God, this, I'm kind of rattling through because there's just so much going on. And this, I would love to drive one of these, a Honda Happy Recreational Vehicle. Another Rover. Goodness me, it's a three-door. So much going on, you don't even notice what's going on. Oh, that's just unfair. <laughs> Silverstone trim. Is this a GTI? Uh, SEI. SEI, okay, yeah. Moving from the excitement of those two, the red glory of a Maestro. Fantastic. And nicely shined up. And very few of these around anymore, actually. Oh, 306. Sorry, I'm buzzing by because there's just so much to see. 306 five door, these are wonderful cars. Now, not often you see a BX, but even less often you see a BX and a BX estate side by side. This is the joy that is the festival of the unexceptional. Fantastic. And a, oh, an X plate. Uh, MGF, you are really quite fancy MGF. They look so good with the hard tops on them, don't they? So I'm buzzing by, as I say, because just endless cars. Crikey, the original A-Class is now suddenly a borderline classic. How is that possible? The 205, bona fide classic, Lion going from strength to strength there in the windscreen. M-plate. So the mid-90s stuff is really in full effect here. Crikey! It's a Mardi Gras just there, so I'm being very, very excited by this. Gaz. Wowee. So rather excitingly, we reviewed one of these things on the channel a little while ago, and you never see these, so I was amazed to see one. And there's even a picture of Putin driving Bush in a car this colour. Who knew? Wow. You walk up to see a little Mercedes A-Class, you find a Volga. Who knew? Right, so back to where we're going. So we've got ourselves, what is this, a Talbot, isn't it? It is a Talbot. We've got ourselves a Talbot camper. Tapes and spanners, says in the windscreen. That's a very handy bit of classic motoring there. Audi A1. These are such amazing emerging classics. All aluminium body, massively ahead of their time. Finally being recognised as the true classic they are. Ah, hello. Oh, Chloe, hello. hello. <laughs> right. So I'll quickly climb in and look around the tour, but this thing is amazing. It's got a kitchen, it's got a little TV, it's got a shower over there. It's got all the utilities, like a little switch panel and stuff. I've got a captain's chair just there, so you can sort of get comfy there. And this, is vintage electronics because this belongs to what's your twitter name 
VHS Chloe. VHS this Chloe. is actually for John of Automotive Tales. <laughs> so this is VHS Chloe's van, <laughs> and um, the person who repaired my, uh, was it a Volvo radio? Volvo radio. I was going to say Rover, but it was a Volvo radio. <laughs> so I've got stuff for John. He's got the Volvo V70. Yes, which is here as well. He's coming in a Rolls Royce, actually. Is he? Yeah, I think he is, because oh he said he couldn't find something exceptional. So Zoom down there. That is just a cool dashboard. Oh, wow. Cool dashboard. <laughs> I just walked into the ceiling. But there's a bed up there as well. Yeah, yeah. It all comes out onto this bit. Yeah. Well, I might have some more work for you, because I've got a couple more radios that aren't working. <laughs> Very quickly, this is one of the earlier reviews we did on the channel, which is a really popular review many, many moons ago. A K10 Micra. Always good. Don't see a gold one very often. That's quite high spec with some pretty fabulous tartan interior. I love that. And then we have a tiny, not many cars can make a Micra look big, but this little Fiat can. I'm guessing it might be a Polish owner, judging by the number plate in the windscreen. Now, swinging round from the little Fiat, we've got ourselves a rather tasty, and it's, I use the phrase hesitantly, a very, very nice Vectra, which I think is a V6 which belongs to uh, James, the rubbish mechanic, the guy who helped me. So it's a different Vectra. There are two blue Vectras here today. Wow, what are the chances? He's missing, though, his furious driving sticker. He's got that later. <laughs> um, but what are the chances? Two identical blue Vectras. And then we've got this rather incredible Citroen turbo diesel XM, which actually passed me on the motorway. It looked absolutely fantastic at speed on the motorway, sort of cruising along like a thing from outer space. Those tail lights just look incredible. Now this taxi actually belongs to Harry, who owns the Bedford, Bedford CF we had on the channel a little while ago. So a lot of people with a lot of cars all sort of lurking in these same similar circles. Like Prince Philip, he can cruise around London incognito and no one will bother him. Ah, Volvo time. Now this is nicely lowered. 940 SE, and we've got leather, we've got a proper nice manual gearbox in it, excellent, that's not leather, it's uh, half leather, and tweed, got the, the pull down child seat in the back as well, very very nice, a couple of bond bugs, I wonder how far they came in these things, absolutely insane vehicles, huge fun, we always see a bug at a show, they get everywhere, Great fun. Like Metro, I think we're going to see a lot of Metros today. This looks like an early one with the recessed headlights, either early or very basic. They actually made special base spec trims for these. This is a City X, it's fairly low. And what year is it? On a B, so it's quite early. Yeah, they uh, later in production, they, they de specced them at a pretty great expense. Gave you worse everything. Ah, this must be Ian's Seabrook's car because he had, was coming in a, a white Corsa. Very, um, no, that's his hat. This is Ian's car, Mr. Hubnut. We'll see if we can get a look at this. This is very similar 1.2 size engine and car to the Punto I've come in, so that's quite curious. Now, this is so cool. This thing is amazing. I saw this last year. Looks like a, a comma, which always gave me. The heebie-jeebies as a kid, I've said that in the past in videos. Something about the way they sit just made me feel weird. Come on, Eileen. <laughs> it has got, what engine is this? OM605. An OM605 Mercedes. Great engine, two and a half litre turbo diesel. I'm gonna suggest makes quite a bit more power than the original <laughs> comma four cylinder. Tastefully modern. Yeah. Uh, I'll put it this way. Discreetly. I can keep up with traffic. Yes, <laughs> if the traffic is also doing 105. <laughs> it's geared for 156. Really? Yeah. I, I haven't got the minerals to take. <laughs> One day this thing might do 150 miles an hour. That is a beautiful bit of work. I'm absolutely in awe of this. I love the Perspex engine cover so you can see what's going on. It's a Mercedes badge just there. Excellent. Oh, Cavalier, Mark III Cav. High point of Vauxhall's history. I do say so myself. The last comfy Vauxhall. Lovely seats, nice interior, really well laid out. Everything on these is just so perfectly thought through. Okay, we have got ourselves another tool, but second tool of the day, I'm only five rows into the show. Now this one is, oh, it's a rapier spec. Lots of wasps today, I'm noticing. So this is a Solara. Uh, can't see what spec it is, apart from it being a rapier. <laughs> it's adopted a wasp and it won't go away. 
done a couple of orbits on the channel, always seem very popular, just because they're just so rare. Right hand drive, there's 11 Solaras. So that's 100% accurate then. Oh, squeezy door handles, I forget that on these, uh, on Roots cars. Oh, this is lovely, it's only got 55,000 miles on it. Oh, that's so cool. So moving on from the incredibly rare uh, Talbot over there to this beautiful, I mean, check out the color of this thing, this Volvo 144. And I've mentioned it before, my, one of my granddad said a Volvo 140 when I was growing up. It didn't have white wall tires, so it's nothing quite as extravagant as that, but this is just delightful. That blue is amazing, and another, another Maestro. I'm feeling we might see a few Maestros today. This one, the steel bumper hubcaps, I'm guessing fairly low spec. Clubman, yes, this is the base spec kind of thing. A 2.8 injection Capri, a real mixed match of stuff. I'm hoping he doesn't need that on the way home. And another Corsa, maybe this is the year of the Corsa B. Oh, it's an Opel Corsa, this has come from, from Germany. I made the, made the trip all the way across Europe to come and see this, next to a very nice Astra. Oh, I'm not going to ignore the Astra, just say it's very nice indeed, but another Proton. The Steph has company, that has got the fancy Proton alloy wheels on it. Very cool indeed. Oh wow, and a Puma. Puma's definitely coming into their own as a modern classic, although the frilliness we see down here will be finishing off a lot of them in short order before many get a chance to become proper classics, unfortunately. Well, it's 10 o'clock and the field is filling up very rapidly indeed. I've only got this far into the show and there's all this other stuff to come back and look at and cars are still coming in, but right now I've got to get up to the stage where stuff is going to be happening in a few minutes. Oh, there's so many things I want to come back for. I want to come back and look at that Alpha. Nice P6 V8 over there. So many cool things like that Datsun, that's so cool. Alpha 6, I've never seen an Alpha 6 in person before. That Saab is delightful. This is an absolute smorgasbord, oh my word. Sorry, quick diversion. I'm so easily distracted, I'm sorry. We have to take a look at this thing because this is just astonishing. Pontiac, oh, what the hell is it called, sorry. Silhouette, that's an old, not a Pontiac. Goodness me. I think it's driven from Holland on those plates. Silhouette spec Oldsmobile. That is just incredible, 1991. Holy moly. Right, back to my intended journey. Oh, beige escorts. I always get reminiscent of them, then I drive one, remember. Not I could. Um, not the droop boot Renault 12. God, that's a rarity. Oh man, I'm gonna have to cover a proper walk back in a minute. Alpha 164. Volvo, Dolomite, Rover 200, oh, sorry, I'm being distracted again. This is exactly, oh no, it's not exactly, it's exactly the, the colour and wheel trim of one that I had in the late 90s or mid 90s. Nightfire Red, those hubcaps, the mum's a 216 SI, so nicer seats if I'm honest. Loving the Volvo, loving the Triumphs, oh, the Alpha GTV. So much, oh my god, some this is the least direct walk in a hurry I've ever done. Mark 1 Manta. That is spectacular. My mum had one of these when I was a kid. We used to drive to school in it. That is just incredible. Oh crikey, the Tatra. 601? 603, sorry. Oh, a Fiat Punto, a second Punto convertible. Goodness me. I suppose this is the mecca of rare cars. Hello. Can I just ask? Yeah, now I've got my glasses. Sorry, is this a 1.6 or 1.2? 1.6. Oh, fantastic. Brilliant, so this little car, it's been in this gentleman's family since 2000, so 23 years, and it's just driven out for the first time in three four years, four years, yeah. yeah. Of course, they're brilliant cars, so it just got here. As long as they don't rust, these are fantastic. It's amazing, I mean, yeah. I did my very first little bit of Minor welding at the back of the sill. Oh, okay. This year. Oh, that's pretty good going to be fair. Years. See, mine's got that same area. Yeah. Someone's done it, but needs to be redone. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Oh, thank you, much indeed. Bye. Have a great show. All right. Continuing to walk very haphazardly. 
Katie and the Audi survived. Thank goodness. She was very worried about the cooling system and that. Oh, hello. You're right. Sorry. This is a very, very, very cool car indeed. I was going to walk you around this car. The most distracted, very fast walk you've ever seen. This little Chrysler is not at all standard. Check out the arches and wheels on this car. You've not done anything to the engine on this, have you? It's just suspension and... It's just noisy. Right. Like just noisy. Cool. Yeah. Brilliant. You've made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely rammed with stuff as well. Yeah, as it always is. You I'm kind not of, going to wash it, Lord. That's too much. You kind of tour the country in this quad, don't you? Yeah, Brilliant. I'm doing about 1,500 miles this week, isn't it? How many? 1,500, roughly. Oh, okay, yeah. Going that's... around every single pedal in the road. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's only a 400 mile drive, but the diversions around potholes add to the journey. <laughs> that was my colleague, Aid Brennan, who, if you read any of the performance car magazines, he photographs many of those. That is very cool indeed. Where are we going? We don't need roads. We're going to drive in the field. Base spec joy. Oh, Mark II joy. Right, so we've headed up to the castle end of the garden. And this area here is reserved for previous winners. So cars that have done particularly well in the past and won the show. And it's 11, well, half past 10. It should be on the stage right now, but cars are still rolling in. Oh my goodness. Such incredible rarity. Not a Tesla. Uh, the little, oh God, what even is it? Not a Daihatsu, is it? It's a, uh, I'll find it in a bit. Stuff's still arriving. Oh, crikey. Anyway, so we've got this Chrysler, which, I know this car, I've shot this car for Practical Classics many years ago. That one about four years ago. This Astra, which confusingly has a sticker that says Belmont in the back window. It's not a Belmont, it's a hatch. This one, I think you've lost, you've lost. This is the Black Prince Proton, which won last year, which is a fantastic car. A very posh version of iDriver Classics one that we rescued from a garage. Look at the interior, this is, this is like new, this is pristine. And then on the other side, hoping you can't hear the copyright music in the background, we've got this astonishing Nissan. This is an astonishing little Nissan Sunny, a B11 or a Datsun. Fantastic, is it yours? Oh, okay. Wow, another one which is just like new. What's the mileage on this thing? 49,000 miles. Wow, oh, I love the original 80s torch. New information. This cat is a Studio Ghibli cat. If you're a Ghibli fan, you'll know this is from Kiki's Delivery Service, which is available from HMV, I believe, at the moment, on Blu-ray and DVD. This part of the show is the Concourse, or Concours d'Elegance, the Concours de Chod. This is the best of the best, or possibly you could call it the worst of the worst, or the, the best of the worst. I don't know how you want to be phrasing this, but these are the finest survivors of the worst cars. What is it, 1988 Rover 213. This is the lesser remembered shape Rover 200. Very, very Honda. This is the beigest Rover I think I've ever seen. But look at the condition of it. Check out those fantastic seat covers. Quite a remarkable thing. What a car. What a beautiful lump of beigeness. That appears to say 6,200 miles. 6,213 miles. I'm, I'm reading that right, aren't I? That's incredible. Okay, we're moving on quickly because there's so much to see. We've got ourselves a Volvo. 1978 244. Slant nose, bronze coloured. Beautifulness. And you'll see, because this is a Volvo and Volvos are intended to be used literally all year round, it's got winter tyres on it so you can go chugging through the ice. Sorry. Fantastic. Stark contrast, the little Fiat next to it, a 128 from 1970. Just look at the range of colours. We have such boring cars these days. This is beautiful little pale blue and red interior. Again, like new, this is, I say, the best of the worst. The most basic chuddy cars, but in such a stunning condition. 93 Justy, when did you last see a 93 Justy? <laughs> Left hand drive, where's this come from? Dutch. Wow. This is driven all the way from Holland. That's so cool. Frantically being cleaned, ready for judging. Next to an Astra Merit. My God, my boss had one of these in this exact color. I think on the same age a few years ago. He used to drive it because he could drive till the cam belt snapped. 
and then just change the cam belt and keep driving. Have you actually driven from Holland in this car? Yeah. Wow. When did you arrive? Uh, well, we had a holiday in Shropshire first. Oh, okay. We came here on the 19th and then we had our holiday for about eight days. Then, wow. Um, we uh, passed through Derbyshire yes, uh, yesterday uh -huh. and um, visited the Great British Car Journey Museum. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, then we came here. Cool. So, and now here you are. So the car, not only is it an exhibit in a show, it's done a complete road trip of the oh, UK. Yeah, it's, my, it's my daily driver. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. Yep. It's my only car too. So. Is it four-wheel drive? Uh, no, no. Okay. So they were all built as four-wheel drives. Mm -hmm. So it has the transmission tunnel and yeah. everything. But because we don't need it in the Netherlands. <laughs> not many mountains. Uh, no, exactly. It's all flat. So yeah. um, they wanted to make it cheaper and it's, uh, okay. it's just front-wheel drive. Wow. Yeah, so if it had doubly... four-wheel drive, it had a red button on the shifter. Oh, okay, yeah. For uh, turning it on. Yeah. So by being two-wheel drive, it's even rarer than yeah, an already rare car. The absolute budget model, the yeah. smallest engine. The no extras. No extras, yeah. No. I've, put, I've put all the extras on oh, <laughs> Thank you. No problem. So yeah, there's the 87 Astra Estate. Oh, yeah. I do love an estate car. We've done, and we've got a 97 Micra. Again, fabulous colors. It's September. We only have to This is not, see, 1997 seems like such a modern car, but that is 26 years ago. Or 25 years ago. Wow, look at the state of that. That's like new. <laughs> oh, thank you. What's the mileage on it? 25,000 miles. Someone hated this car so much, they only drive it 25,000 miles. <laughs> that is amazing. And look at the fabric. Two old ladies. Two old ladies. They were both, <laughs> yeah. both sisters. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's two old lady sisters owned it from you. and thousand miles a year. Oh, wow. That's how these amazing things survive, isn't it? Someone, yeah. their last car, and they, they treat it like... Yeah. 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 Right, so now we've got a Princess 1800 on the wedges. These are either loved or derided, depending on where you're... You're looking love the script on there. Fantastic interior again. <laughs> uh, the owner just said no power steering on this thing, which would be quite a weighty car, I'd imagine. Wow, little crown. These were so forward thinking in some respects, but so backwards in others. They're quite incredible. There's almost no survivors of these now. Well, there is a lot of survivors of Renault Fours, enormously popular classic. Very, very popular in France, and you still sort of see quite a lot of them. It's disappearing a bit now. Any French holiday, you'll see a lot of them lurking around. I love the little diamond details all around the car, sorry. <laughs> and Rover 200, always good to see an R8. This is 95 214, so 214i is about as base as it gets, although it has got the Silverstone half leather cloth, so I'm guessing someone's added that, and it looks like it's got a leather steering wheel as well. So I'm not sure, oh it's a German spec, okay, so I don't know if the German spec was different perhaps, but that's cool, and there's two European cars in Concord so far, which is amazing, this show has got such notoriety to travel all of Europe, and people are coming across to see. So now we've got a beautiful Zantia, 1994 on an M plate, oh, and it was 95, 96. Oh well, air, right, air suspension sunking low. Now we have a blue blue bird from 1988. Actually the red blue bird, which we featured in a review a little while ago, is actually down in the same row of the show as my, my Punto, if you're passing by. It's a two litre GSX, actually quite high spec for an exceptional. It's a little bit exceptional in a way. Lovely blue velour. A fiesta. This is where we do get back into unexceptionality. Mark III 1993 Fiesta in a stunning. All these cars are just remarkable. It's so good. Incredible velour. This one's another low miler, 19 and a half thousand. A lot of these, these small 90s cars, they would have been people's last cars in many cases, and they would have just doted on them for years. Another Astra State, next generation on from the previous one, 1993. Tough cars, these Astro Estates. 88205. This is one with a newer dash. And, Are you uh, copying me, Mr. Richardson? No. <laughs> I've done my research, I don't need to copy you. <laughs> Enjoy your non shambolic non shuffle, sir. Yeah, it's very non shambolic. Indeed, sir. Yes, yeah, so anyway, as I was saying. Yep, newer dash. It's newer dash. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's an XE. That's it's an XE. That's the, that's the base that's model. That's the base model. 
wheel trims have been changed though. The wheel trims have been changed, we're taking off in fact. I think they're off, uh, those are off a rally aren't they? I think they are, yeah. I know people say these uh, YouTube reviews of the same show are very similar but... <laughs> Thank you sir. <laughs> anyway, so yet more cars that you might not give a second look to. We've got a Laguna, for goodness sake, which are wonderful cars. We've just driven one of those on the channel and really liked it. We've got a Mark VI Escort, which obviously you're also going to not give a second look to, but fantastic. A car we'll give a second look to today because we test drove this on a review just a week or two ago. And there's the owner. Hello, this is Chris, who Hello, Mr. Driving. not you? only owns a Primera for some reason, has owned a Mondeo and a... And, um, what else? Rovers. Many Rovers. Rovers galore. This is the, the, the victim who bought Quentin. Quentin. Yeah. And I nearly put my t-shirt on today, but I didn't, okay. so I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so how's the Primera still going well? Oh, fantastic. 42,000 mile now. Wow. It's 2,000 mile in the last year, because really, when yeah. I drove into this event last year, it clicked over 40,000 miles. And that's 42,000 miles. 2,000 miles. <laughs> 2,300. Oh, so yeah, because he came down to... It would have been 1,700 if it hadn't come down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 600 miles in one weekend. <laughs> well, it was a nice weekend, though, so that was all good. We yeah. were just reminiscing. We both worked at well, one of the suppliers, and I worked at Nissan. So oh, really? Back remember. when these were current? Uh, I was a bit uh, later than this. Oh, okay. Or three, and I was 97 or four. Oh, right, okay. So after this. Yeah. yeah. So you, this is all very much... You know, bread and butter for you guys. Yeah, oh yeah. It's interesting, yeah. yeah, to look at and yeah. reminisce. What kind of reaction does this get at home? Because you're local to the factory, obviously, so... Yeah, I'm probably about 30 miles away. Yeah. So, I'll, there's not a huge amount of, like... People don't recognise it. No, oh, it's interesting. Really. Kind of a shame, really. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. You'd think there'd be a little more... A local like, pride. ...recognition of the yeah. local part of the, the local history in a way yeah it is yeah so, no there isn't hmm. which is a shame it is rather but it's a lovely car and i love that you've got a bag of worthers on the on the well, dashboard yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't... I did take the uh, beaded seat cover off oh, I did have that on for a while oh you can actually see the indents of it still <laughs> the impressions it's, it's left in a set <laughs> your taxi driver yeah. seat cover <laughs> yeah exactly oh that's cool right well, i was just about to say oh look another punto <laughs> this is also a Punto ELX, which kind of shared garage space of mine, didn't it? Mm. This is the car we reviewed on the channel about two years ago, I think it was. And then, yeah, shared garage space with my, now my one, which was the same owner as this one. So yeah, this is a lovely thing. This has got the, the blue alternative to the fabric in mine. And uh, we got distracted from this Honda a few minutes ago. It's a lovely A-plate Accord with a Honda-matic three-speed box of no joy at all 1983 special in again immaculateness now i need to check the number plate but i did drive a corsa a mark yeah this is i believe the Corsa we drove on the channel mark's not around at the minute but otherwise we would go and say hello to him check all the 1990s fantastic stuff he's got in here <laughs> it is a little time machine he's got coming out running the door amazing and a michael Crichton story tape Fantastic. Yep, furious driving sticker there. There we go. Just caught back from his fish and chips. Yeah, mid lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, who owns the Corsa. Didn't think we were going to see him, but here he is. My main question is, where did you find all the 90s stuff for the? Some of it's mine. The actual, some of the tapes are mine. Yeah. Uh, from when I was a teenager, the Jurassic Park book uh, with the proper Jurassic Park logo was yeah. also mine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some of it I've just, uh, I've just furnished. Uh, there's there's yeah. an undrank uh, Virgin Cola in there. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. <laughs> If you remember, Amazing, I remember going yeah. to Virgin Cinemas and I thought, oh, let's get some Virgin Cola bottles. And, uh, you know, because that's, that was very much of the time and I just mm. want to live the 90s and yeah. there it is. And there is perfect slice of the, and the car's running well still. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. And uh, finally, you know, sorted out the wheel trim and it's all... It's yeah, all it's been, complete. Now. Yeah, and Brilliant. the bonnet was changed last week, so yeah. uh, that was a bit scabby and um, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. It's been quite overwhelming actually. Brilliant, oh, I'm glad. Right, now we're at risk of repeating ourselves a little bit. We've got another Cavalier here. And in the Micro, this is obviously just, as Chris said, came out the same factory as the Primera. Same paint booth. No, Katie's there. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Now, this is incredibly low spec 1983 Metro, one litre standard. As I said earlier, they made these things super low spec, so you didn't get headrests, you only got one sun visor you got a different dashboard with less things in it or blanking plates everywhere they gave you the, the recessed headlights which were worse no wheel trims this actually belongs to um 
more sorts of motors slash also driven find them on youtube and find more stories about this they love their base model cars on there so yeah this is a lot of the stuff that you don't get on the other cars no fog lights no handbrake grip no side repeaters on your indicators so this is painfully basic Oh, DAF 33. Sorry, this is me just bouncing from one car to the next and being massively distracted by everything. Um, well, it's the judges happening here, so I won't distract them. Your DAF? Yes. That's quite cool, isn't it? That is very nice, very nice. She's only done 8,000 miles from me. 8,000 miles? From me, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So what, there's an old person who never drove it, or...? Um, well, the history was, it used to be an old um, a lady used to own it. Yeah. And she used to drive, drive it back and forth to school. Yeah. And that was it. She was then came blind, so they put her in, the, in storage. Yeah. And she sat the, there. The car, not the lady. The, yeah, the, um, the car. So yeah. they then the son then took it on as his mm. and didn't get on with it. But then when it sold to a friend of ours in Bristol. So we know pretty much. His entire so, life. But yeah. Wow. So, and do you use it much? Yes. And I absolutely love it. So yeah. absolutely love it. We have a uh, DAF 32. Okay. Uh, obviously the DAF 33. Yeah. We have also the DAF 33 van. Oh really? Yeah. And then going to the other extreme, we've got uh, El Dorado, Cadillac El Dorado. Oh right, okay, that's a bit different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you're going from one. So yeah. from one end to right to the other end. Yeah, you like your extremes. Oh, yeah. Right, so from the sublime to the, well, fairly normal actually. This is a Fiesta Classic Court, so the Classic is always a badge they give to the outgoing model when they've got some leftovers to get rid of. So they often dump a lot of extras on these things, but sometimes they won't. Okay, this one has Max, got Max Williams. manual windows. Hello, Max. Nice to see you. To the second centre for a second, we've got a Daihatsu Applause. I mean, honestly, when have you ever seen a Daihatsu Applause? Ever. I mean, literally ever. Amazing. Next to a Mitsubishi Galant, which was relatively mainstream at one point, but I don't think I've seen a 1990 Galant in 30 years. It was quite a handsome looking car. Very Japanese interior, for obvious reasons, mainly being it's Japanese. And finally a Suzuki Baleno. Yeah, another car you just do not see anymore. Hubcaps in full effect. Electric windows though, a bit posh. Cavalier 2000. I always feel like the Cavalier and the Cortina are a little old for this show. But that DAF was 1973, that's 1980, that's 81. Two tones, is that a Crusader or something? Ha oh, Skoda! Beautiful. It's like a 911 basically. Are you walking around talking to yourself? I look like you are, but that's fine. No, I'm not. I'm not mental. People expect it of you. Okay, I am mental, but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna find out what year this car is. It's 1976. It's a Renault 16, but you knew that anyway. Oh, was that the judging? It was. Oh, from Percival Motors. We've borrowed a few cars from Percival's over the years. Really good little car dealership down in Kent. Do, and very, very fine cars indeed. Well, all of motoring journalism is here today. Hello, Darren. Hey, you all right? You all right? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say hello to Richard Dredge. Crabtree keeps following us around and, and lurking in the background. Go away, Crabtree. We're coming to... <laughs> that I've just put on to Richard. It's very accurate, unfortunately. It's very accurate. We'll have to blur that. Bit. We'll have to um, uh, put a little Talbot Horizon, which is an Ultra, which I guess is a special edition with fog lights. I won't interrupt because I think the, uh, the hard sell is being given at the moment. Maybe a new owner driving home in it. So this is just astonishing. I was going to hope to catch a few more owners with their cars, but so many people are just obviously taking advantage to walk around. SD1, Golf, Metro. Lots of Metros. Metros have suddenly become popular. They're a bit of a... What have got next? I don't know, cast out on, on the classic car world for a while. But the Maxis, Maxis are suddenly becoming valuable. This is a 1750 HL, so a bit posh. Plenty of Fiat's in effect today. Another car for sale. This is Escort Estate. Mark IV. This is only 1.3L, so I've had cars of this ilk in the past. Very much a tool when they're new. But coming back into the future, 
we've got some cool stuff over here. Random stuff that turns up. First of all, we've got an Alpha 75 next to a DeLorean. This is possibly the only time in history this has ever happened. Now, I do love an Alpha 75, which spawned the SZ and the RZ. V6 in the front, or a 2 litre twin spark, which is also good. Transaxle in the back, and then just wonky angular styling. It's so cool. But next to it, it's a Twingo, obviously it's a French car, but it's driven from France. Such an international show these days. Another Laguna. Oh, that's kind of fun. It's kind of what I want to be doing with the, uh, the Freelander. So we've got an Invercar, which I don't think drove her on its own power. These things always bring up... Always get a, a massive crowd around an Invercar. Well, most people remember these, so I'm old enough to remember them, and I really don't. But people do seem to have a soft spot for them. And a Jumbuck! Amazing! Let's take a wander down here. So this is a P100. This is a Cortina-based pickup truck, which you just really don't see anymore. But I'm guessing from the 3000L badges on the side, this has got a 3 litre in it of some kind. Switch as an owner around to ask about it. And the nice Volvo. Now that, I don't recognise. Carib? I'm guessing this is a Japanese import. Z Touring. Four wheel drive Carib Sprinter. Okay. This is a new one on me. This is what I love about this show. The fact you can turn up and see a car you've never heard of. Even if you're kind of immersed in car culture all day long every day and turn up and see something you've never seen before. So that is actually quite exciting. It's a Subaru, oh this is interesting, this is a Focus Millennium and the Millennium range came out obviously in 1999 or 2001. So just by chance I've run into Mr Braithwaite. Dickie, hello. And this is a previous owner of my Punto which is in the distance over there. But this is the man who basically saved the car from I was on the, it was about four, four or five years ago and I was on my way to a meeting with a colleague and uh, we were, he was driving away that I would never have gone. We passed a pub, I saw the Punto in the car park. I was like, stop, I've got to go and take a picture of that and went and took a picture and I came back to the car and because I had my stuff for the meeting I was like I'm gonna leave a note so that's that's how I found it and then the owner who used it to he was basically a mechanic who used it to go around to the pub while he decided what to do with it and he'd left it there the night before that was the wow. only reason it was there um, he got in touch with me so so that's how we came to buy it and that was before we knew it was the oldest one we knew it was early but yeah, yeah. But that's how the car got that's, discovered that's and effectively discovered. saved because, yeah, I guess at that point it was on the verge of being I, I don't think or... it would have left that man because I don't think much leaves him intact. Oh, OK. Yeah. So they're broken or driven yeah, to death. Yeah, I would have thought it would have probably... Well, given that he was driving around to the pub and it was no tax law test, it probably had just been impounded at some yeah, point. crushed. The people at the, I actually contacted the pub and the people at the pub didn't know whose it was. Oh, really? Just the car abandoned in the car they, they, just, they just thought it was just abandoned there, but oh, no. um, he must have come to retrieve it and they told yeah. him and he got in touch with me uh, so okay yeah brilliant yeah. oh glad you saw it yeah yeah it was, it was definitely fate that day yeah yeah, yeah things worked out well Thanks. so i wandered across and i couldn't help but notice a pair of rover 75s i saw a few rover 75s driving today but the fact is that there are people who are under 65 70 or so driving rover 75s apart from me it gets, it's kind of heartening so why on earth do you like Rover 75s and why have you got two of them? Well, one's mine, one the tour is mine, and Chris, this is, this this one's is one. yours. Okay. For sale, if anyone would like to buy I'm noticing the price is 3250 which is actually quite encouraging because I want to get about three and a half grand for mine. So. Okay, yeah. I think that's probably about a grand too much. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, oh, just that in the arches, sorry. <laughs> right, and the sales are going as well. Oh, really? So oh, okay. Maybe two, five. Maybe, oh, okay. So we'll start reason. the haggling at three. Yeah, but it's got a beautiful Oh really? Oh wow! I will in a second. Yeah. yeah. So what brought you to 75s? Because they're not 
Well, I haven't been for a long time, young people's car. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like how they look. I've always yeah. liked the yeah. uh, the design. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I bought this to have as a daily, oh, okay. but it turned out to be far too unreliable. Oh, really? It has, um, I probably should say this about a car I'm going to sell, <laughs> it has intermittent complete electrical failure. Oh. So that's a little bit of a problem and not yeah. too reliable for a daily driver. Ah, so. But other than that, it looks great and it's fun to drive. Yeah, yeah they're work. really comfortable, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And, and for me, I'm I'm a mobile classic car mechanic. How are you? Um, so when I'm, when I'm travelling to and from customers, they kind of like me to be in something yeah. a little bit retro. Yeah. yeah um, so I first started off in a Morris Traveller and then when I realised that winter time was coming <laughs> it was a bit difficult with single speed wipers and single speed yeah. heater. Yeah. Um, but Defrost bought, does it work. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> but I bought this and you know customers just they just adore it yeah. and you know yeah. because it's eccentric it's quirky and, yes. and for me you know when you're 30 miles away in the summer and you've got climate control but you've oh, got all yeah. of the you know, you've got all the um, lovely luxuries of a modern day car. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's just great. It's a slice of old world but with modern comfort. It is, and I think, I think in a way as well, you know, it's that kind of whole complete, you know, young with essentially a, your granddad's car yeah. <laughs> and I think that I think that you know with with the type of world we live in now where it's all kind of throwaway society I think it's a great kind of push for for, for you know conservation conservation well, yeah. good yeah. word Chris yeah, good. conservation <laughs> excellent oh cool oh, thank you Congrats indeed no problem at all so yeah so two people who are under 60 as well as me yeah. driving representatives exactly which makes me happy <laughs> <laughs> very very not photo this belongs to Sam an editor I work for who has completely missed the point of the show. Sorry, Sam, you've failed in your task. But I suppose his argument here is that, uh, also failing, this is very unexceptional because no one bought one of these big Daimlers. So it's a rarity and therefore unexceptional. There's some logic in there somewhere. Oh, who knows? Is that a turbo? No, it's a 1.4. Very well travelled Triumph. It's even done a lap of spa. This is Hello. Gentil, who owns a lovely BMW E12, yes, isn't it? Yes, yeah. 1974 uh, BMW E12. Is it here? No, it's not here, is it? It doesn't work. Of course it's not here, yeah. it's not working. The brakes um, not sorted yet, but hopefully I'll be able to but make it, it yeah, next but, year. But if people want to see it, the YouTube channel is? Gentil's Garage. I don't own a garage, but I couldn't come up with a better name anyway. <laughs> oh, 166 in Nuvola. Lovely. It's gone from green to blue. Beautiful car. Want me to ask you anything? I'll do the best. Is it for sale? No, that's <laughs> one thing that's definitely not. That is beautiful. Have you had it for long? Uh, ten years. Really? Yeah. Wow. And um, I've worked out that it's cost me 50, £58.71 a month. A month? Including purchase price. Oh, okay. It's not too bad if you include that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, and it's a V6. It's a two and a half V6 man. Yeah. And were you looking for this colour? Because this colour is amazing. To be honest, when I was buying... I knew you'd have to compromise on something. Yeah. Because I wanted the telephone and the sat nav. Yeah. That. Couldn't get the telephone and the sat nav, so this is sat nav that doesn't work, which of course is no, not actually. Well, after 15 years, it's going to be out of date anyway. anyway. So, yeah. yeah. So, the Nivola Blue came up, and I thought, I like that, but <laughs> I need to get it touched in. It's going to be expensive. <laughs> yes. But yeah. uh, a good body shop can touch like, Yeah, it. yeah. But, uh, it's definitely, yeah, great from motorway miles. Yeah. Um, Beautiful, it's a lovely, beautiful car. Thank you very much. Can you give us a little rev as a walk away? <laughs> lovely. A busso glory. Now I very much approve of the wheels on this, this Bluebird. Really, really good, sorry. It's really good. And this is the Bluebird, which we actually shot on the channel a little while ago. And I just, I, I think the more I use it, the more layers I kind of build up on it. So. so hello, this is James who owns this Bluebird, and this is John who owns all the Protons. I do have, <laughs> and actually I've shot myself in the foot because there's so many blooming Protons here today. You've made them popular. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I've made them popular or cool, but I've made them available. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're on content missions. Yes, it's so hard to get around here because there's so much. Talk yeah. to James about his Bluebird. James, this car is amazing. How long have you had it for now? I've had it since 2019, so coming on for four years. So, so yeah, four years now. now. Yeah. 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 It's an amazing condition car, isn't it? But you've yeah. got really 
really lucky with it. I mean, yeah, I started, I wanted to use it just as a daily, and yeah. as soon as I bought it, I mean, it's clear to see it's, it's too good to <laughs> Yeah, you to can't daily, daily it, no. <laughs> um, and I think actually after you saw it and, and detailed it for me, oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I actually thought, no, do you know what, I need to put it away. So I kept it garaged and it just comes out for the shows now. Yeah, really. and you replaced it with a micro, which is so good it's now in the concourse over exactly, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's been great to see. So, yeah, um, well, it does look amazing, doesn't it? Oh, stunning. Yeah. He's really looked after the car as well. Adam, yeah, so it looks, it looks really good. To a better owner, really. No, which is good. Anyway, right. Yeah. I don't know, rush off to this thing. Is that a, Mon a Focus Millennium over there? Hello. <laughs> James's mum. <laughs> and a Focus Millennium behind her. Look, look. Rover Streetwisers are suddenly classic cars. Who knew that? Rover was so far ahead of the curve by making a regular two-wheel drive car look vaguely off-roady and adventurous like a Nissan Qashqai does now to much greater success, unfortunately. There's no justice in the world. Do you love your Rover Streetwise? I do. I've only had this a couple of months. Oh, okay. So this is a new project for me. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, it's an L-series diesel engine. Oh, right, yeah. So we're going to get a bit more oomph out of it. Yes. Tweak up um, the injectors and stuff. Yeah, got, got mad, managed to get those, and they're like rock and horse. Food. Yeah, they're really hard to get. Great colour, isn't it? Yeah, good with green. It's quite uh, rare. Okay. Yeah, very nice. And I think only available on the streetwise. Yeah, I've not seen any others in that colour, so possibly yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. I'm glad, glad they're being saved at last. Absolutely. Right. So That's much stuff. So much ordinary stuff, which is just being treated to reverential love. Where is that modified cadet? Again. Now I'm on a mission right now because someone just told me about a car. Oh, um, let's get distracted again. Because over here is a lovely little Punto convertible. Also, one, there's a 1.6 apparently. No, 1.2, sorry. This is one's a 1.2. We're very much in Punto land today. This is a very similar colour to mine, but more orange. I'm very much in Punto mode today. A rather lovely Senator, which went past us on the motorway on the way here. Looked very, very nice indeed. Another CX, so many CXs. We've got this uh, base model Sierra chugging past. 1.6. We've got ourselves a not very basic 3.5 litre Rover V8. Gosh, that Proton Gen 2, wow. Are you right? <laughs> yeah, so didn't realize you were in a Proton Gen 2. Wow. That's oh, for sale as well. Where on earth did you find this from? We actually bought it originally from eBay. Oh, really? Yeah. Just an eBay find? Yeah. yeah, we bought it originally to put a tow bar onto it. Oh, okay. Um, because the company said they can't fit a tow bar on it. Oh. So we, it's no good to us. So you're selling it again? So we had to reset it again. A few smaller cars, got a little Lupo, there's a coming out the woodwood. Oh, we've got ourselves a Nissan. Hello. Hello. Are you, are you saying hello or are you fighting off a wasp? <laughs> he was. <laughs> so this is a K10 Micro underneath? Underneath. <laughs> underneath the other stuff. I love the accessories. <laughs> is this a Japanese import car? Uh, no. No, it's just a lot of Japanese stuff for it. Oh, okay. Now, I've come back the wrong way to where I was walking a second ago, not to look at a Volvo, 480 which I will look at in a second anyway but to look at this because this someone said is one of the very first Alpha 145s to arrive in the country you'll notice under the bonnet apart from the fact it's a beautiful shade of metallic olive green it's not got a t-spark like mine not the twin spark two litre this has got the one point I think it's a 1.7 I'm not looked to the back yet it's got a boxer engine like from the 33 because this car was ordered before the cars were technically on sale it's like a pre-order for the new model when it was about to come out, which is very exciting. And it's, oh, it's got a digital dashboard, so you can't see the mileage, but it's very, very original. Got the original Blaupont, I think it's an original Blaupont. Lovely, the seats are in amazing condition. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. This is 1.6. So this is basically the base model, which has got drum brakes on the back. Wow. And we're not going to ignore the matching lovely green 480. These are lovely cars, they look so cool, so sharp. Much like this actually, it's a good time for sharp looking cars. And we've got a Lancia, Lancia, sorry. <laughs> what kind of car are we looking at here? Prisma 1600. So this car was abandoned in a scrapyard and it's been rescued 
and it's coming back on the road. Bit by bit being improved, it's great to see it on the road. Aha, this is the Morea, which Ian and I borrowed last year, which is now being lent to an Italian car designer who does a bit of stuff. But it's had a nice polish up and some new wheels put on it. it looks really nice now, massively improved. With a bit of elbow grease, it looks right in the sunshine, it looks a bit drab in the indoors. Remember, I've never seen, never seen, never seen. Here you see uh, Jim's put the um, the lower tailgate down so you can see how that works. Now that is a wonderful little combination. Got your classic Saab, which is in gorgeous condition, has to be said. A complete with racing helmet on the back seat. A tiny caravan, so you're always sorted for comfort and coolness. It's a great little caravan. Gosh, it's a Velsartis. The Velsartis that's for sale. I think I'm just going to walk away rapidly before I make a mistake. Because honestly, these things are amazing. Oh, I love that brown. I think I've seen that brown style on a previous show. Oh gosh, it's Nana. Adding to the list of cars I've previously driven on reviews, this is the Alfa Arna, which isn't an Alfa Arna because it's in the San Cherry Europe. Ah. Hello. It's Jim McGill, it's Sion Hudson, Sean Hudson. Sean. Sean. Uh, I, love, I love mispronouncing your name. It's just, it's just to annoy me. Yes. <laughs> I can do it to annoy me, I don't mind. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> this is also driven. Yeah. Morsels and Motors. Yeah. We've seen two of your cars here in the show. Exciting. The Metro, which is in concourse. Have you one yet? I hope so. <laughs> they did. They came around and judged it and they really rather loved it. They loved all my base stuff that I, yeah. as in my decontenting back. Yeah, days. that was a great display on the back shelf, Thank you. which we've already documented in, earlier Excellent. in the video. Thank you very much. And I'm even wearing a Russian t shirt. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yes, yeah. today is actually all about him. For it once. really is, isn't not it? Not about me. Which it is unusual. Nothing to do with me. It's <laughs> all about him. I just stand here and look pretty. That's my only yeah. role in life. Although, uh, we have spotted the Pasta Picasso down there. Yes. I know, there's a thousand cars beyond where I've parked, it's, and yeah. I've not seen any of them yet. It is worth looking at because uh, Rich has fixed all the terrible welding there. Oh, really? With so, more terrible welding. Excellent. It's slightly less it's terrible. less terrible than before. Way less terrible. There, yes. You can't see through it. Yes. That's better then. Yeah. So um, better. But it's now got a coolant leak, and he. Well, it'll be in one of his videos here, yeah. obviously. We'll go and find that. More Rovers, but look at this. It's a Nissan Serra with its beetle-winged doors. Wow. Bye-bye, DeLorean. Leaving early, along with this 800. Hmm? RS2000. Right. Now, trundle over here quickly. Because this field has got hundreds more cars in it. Insane number. But another Volvo, we always like to see Volvos. This is the mighty Dacia of Hubnut fame. Which I've never seen in the metal before. It's a car that Ian collected uh, from Romania, I think it was, wasn't it? And drove all the way back. Yeah. So it's a little bit rough and ready in places, but the fact it's still on the road is quite amazing next to a very very nice indeed little Honda, is that Honda Acti? I love these little K trucks, lots of fun. Right, just going to see what we've got lurking over here. Oh, a Barquetta! Sorry, I'm being distracted by stuff I like again. My fault. I do really like a Barquetta. We had one at home for a while, which was a great fun car. Only sold it because we needed a space for the dog, which is next to this 156, which someone said is actually a 2.4, which is the five cylinder. Awesome cars, so much fun. It's a 2.4 JTD, be a 10 valve on a two plate. Oh, a Mazda, I think that's 626, isn't it? Or a 25, oh, so much stuff. Now I'm going to leap over here because we've got a Deu. I mean, seriously, when did you last see a Deu? Is this a Espero? No, it's a CD, so it's a posh one. Disney Sparrow, wow. Hello. You own a Deu Espero? Uh, yep, as you see. In, on purpose? Yep, definitely. <laughs> 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 I mean, I collect uh, uh, cars that were made in FSO in Poland. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. Those ones were assembled at FSO in the oh, okay. 1990s. 
And also my uncle had one of them in the 90s, I really mm. liked it, and yeah. there was that point when I decided I also want to have it, Brilliant. so then I bought three of them. <laughs> you, got three, you got three sparrows? Uh, yeah, one is dead actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so when you say your, your country, where is that? Uh, it's Poland. Oh, okay. Poland. Actually, I never knew they built them in Poland. I've, I've learned something new today. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah but they... it's basically a Vauxhall Cavalier yeah, chases yeah. with a Citroën Xantia yeah. body. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. And is it, is it reliable, good car? Yeah, they, they were reliable. I mean, mm. we drove it like that without doing anything from Poland yeah. and no problems. Uh, yeah. They were known to be reliable. Mm. Uh, their biggest problem was rust. Yes. They rusted yeah. really quick. So 90s cars. So yeah, do, yeah, but also they were a poor quality and also I think that there were some mistakes in the project. You can oh, see that okay. when you open the doors after the rain in those cars. Oh. <laughs> the whole car can be like uh, already dry. Mm -hmm. You open the door and you see the uh, water is still uh, going down this this small one drill oh, okay. is meant to let this water out. Yeah. So the doors rust first. Oh, okay. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so you... you Driven this from Poland for the yeah, show, yeah. For the show and also for a trip here. Okay, yeah, uh, in, yeah. Uh, in UK, I wanted to see London, the yeah, British Motor yeah. Museum, stuff That's like good. that. That's good. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you. Actually, also on the channel, uh, Motoring Channel in Poland. So now I will ask you. So <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> What's your channel called? Uh, Moto Bieda. It's translated to Moto Pur, actually. If okay. You say it literally. <laughs> and now we've got more mad stuff. S Class, which is very not unexceptional at all, or it is unexceptional. Uh, the Volkswagen, which is very nice. We drove one of these on the channel recently. A Rover 200 convertible. The Quentin lives this time reverse colours because Quentin, of course, is silver with a red roof. That's red with a well beige roof. Yeah, it's funny how Z3s are now creeping into classicness, and so are the original Rav4s which is kind of fun. Wow, Shirad GTI. That's very, very nice. I'll do a quick glance at this thing, because that's... Mr. Richardson is there again. Oh, God, not you again. It's again, sir. Bah, and this time things will be different. <laughs> well, not really. I'm on part seven, sir. So okay. So things will be very much the same as previously. <laughs> yes, exactly. You do your evil laugh. <laughs> Another rav here. Oh, this is kind of fun. Uh, Mini 1000. And this, I think, is a Mark 1, isn't it, from those taillights? And... Mini Mark II, which you know this is a Mark II because it says on the boot, which makes identification far easier. Has to be said. That's really nice. Every time I look at a Mark II now, I'm looking at it to see how things go together to see what I need to be doing to mine. So you're, you're Paul. I'm Paul. Paul. Yeah. So Paul's got a Mark II. Well, it's an Austin, isn't it? Not, not Morris. Uh, so it is an Austin. Yeah. It's an Austin, yeah. yeah. And you found this in a garage. Your friend found this in the garage. Yeah. So yes, I found it in the garage. Found it in the garage yeah. five years ago? No, seven years no, ago. No, like, I found it two or three years before. It took me ages to get her to sell it. Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. so it's one of the things where someone's had it. Was it like a widow? It was, a, a, it was, was a dad's it? it was a dad's car. Oh, OK. Yeah. And he um, bought it to do up and started it. And then his wife was ill, so it just got left. Right. Yeah. And he'd been... He'd been dead about five years, hadn't he? Yeah. And she just couldn't bear to sell the house. No, it's so quite often it's a, a thing that happens, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, it's a nice thing to hang on to. And so, yeah, so. so the Type 2 van, that was, uh, that was their family holidays, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was mint, really uh, oh, really? About. Oh. She wanted, a, she wanted eight grand for that, I couldn't afford it. Oh. <laughs> so you bought the Mini instead? Oh, you bought the Mini. I yeah. bought the Mini, yes. So, yeah, it's a full restoration in the end, or was it a... Full oh. restoration. Really? Yeah, absolutely. So it was literally stripped down to the shell, yep. um, then stripped, Painted underneath, painted inside, um, painted outside. Ultimately, it's got a different engine in it. Oh, is it? Yeah, so I've got the 850 sat in the garage still, uh, all ready to go in, mm. should ever want to put it back to, to normal, but <laughs> yeah. it is running a 1330. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah, just a bit, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but original interior, all oh, hydroelastic really? suspension oh, still, brilliant. all been refurbed. Oh, cool. And did it need much welding and things, or was it actually quite yes. a good car? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I did need more, <laughs> more welding than somebody let me uh, <laughs> let me have on. <laughs> you told me it was going to be good. <laughs> I welded some of it for you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think, what did we have on it? It had a uh, full new front end, oh, it had okay. inner sills, outer sills, half of A panels. Boot, bit of boot floor. Bit, bit of boot floor. Wow, yeah. so... Bit of underneath the seat. Bit, bit, oh, fairly yeah. significant around yeah, yeah, it. It's had the yeah. usual things, yeah. all the things you'll all do. All the things that yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, that had cool. never been touched though, had it? it no, it, no wasn't, it was. It was absolutely as original. It was just yeah. original rot. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't yeah. patches genuine, on top of patches. It's rot. genuine factory rot. Yeah, it, was, it basically absolutely. was. Yeah, genuine BL rot. Yeah, as per sticker in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> which is sadly accurate. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, seeing a few more themes here. Yet another Twingo. Five series is a lurking in there a bit now. Another Proton. So many Protons, they've become like the popular thing to have here. But more foreign cars. This one's on French plates, that one's on Dutch plates. Yeah, all these people have, across Europe have heard about this show and they've just made the, uh, I say pilgrimage is the wrong word, but they've made the drive all the way across the continent, which is fantastic. Uh, someone else has taken the right attitude to this. Bring a camper van and you've got instant cups of tea all day long. And this is very exciting. Alpha 33, and this is another boxer car. Obviously the 33s all came with the boxers. This is a 16 valve, a 1.7. Oh yeah. Is this a 1.7? Oh, brilliant. Has it uh, been good, good car so far? Uh, I've had it 22 years. Oh, really? So I guess it's a decent one then. <laughs> tried to make it. Yeah. Has it needed need much work over the time? Not. Really? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it, it's running, running stuff. I mean, engine's been out three times. Oh, okay. Clutch, um, valve, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I love the, uh, the period stickers and the CD Walkman yeah, and things yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, it's all, all sort of props and stuff. A lovely car. I always really wanted a Mark III. I only ever got a Mark II. Love the patina on that. More Volvos. Skoda Favorit, which I believe is Sarah Crabtree's daughter's car. I think. No, it's not that one, is it? No, sorry. Same, same color, but not an estate. Hyundai Lantra. Wow. Mark II Punto. Mark II Fiesta. Honda. It is an Accord, isn't it? The Coupe. So much to see. Oh, you go! Goodness me. I'm not, not bored of finding unusual cars down here. That brown Saab, I think, had a cooling issue because that bonnet was up when it came in. Very, very, very rare Renault. Which is 14 GTL. Well, it says GTL on the side as well. I should have spotted that. Oh, there's the... Uh, Brava that we saw roll in earlier on. Such a crazy mix of cars. Lots of yellow cars. Some mentioned yellow cars earlier. We've got three in shot just here. Saab, 121 Saloon, and a Mini. It's a 121 Saloon. I mean, seriously, when did you ever see a 121 Saloon with a full length sunroof? That is bonkers. It looks like a cartoon car. It's like an inflated bubble cartoon. Hilarious, love it. Bolingo. Now this Tempra SW getting very meta. Video filming a video. This car, I believe, this has got the super rare. I've never seen this before, apart from on a Caprice vent that blows down the back window, keeps the back window clear by blowing air through there. Really, really rare option. So this car has come all the way from Portugal <laughs> just for the show. Not perfect, but the chap who owns the car was a BMW dealer mechanic, used to service it, was looking for an E39, saw it for sale, recognised the number plate and had to buy it. So this gentleman, Ericsson, has driven all the way from Portugal in his 520i E39 BMW, which is phenomenal. Why did you come this far to this show? <laughs> well, uh, since I discovered this show, um, I, I loved the, the vibe to it. Uh, because in Portugal we, we only have like classic car shows and for mm. beautifully restored classics. Yeah. And uh, these normal cars, these everyday cars, left, uh, get left aside. So I, I thought I must go there, I must see that with my own eyes and I, I must be a part of it. Yeah. So I've been saving for a year okay. since I saw the reports of last year. Yeah. I thought, no, I'm going to do this. Uh, so yeah, here I am. And did you drive over on your own or with family? Or? No, I, I, I'm on my own. Okay, yeah. wow. <laughs> How long did the drive take? Uh, three days. Okay, so it's quite a, <laughs> One quite... day per country. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice time to spend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the day. Oh, yeah, really. Brilliant. Well, fantastic. Well, good, safe journey onwards. Thank you. Oh, Tigra. Gosh. Ah, camping. Very nice camping. Full cream tea. Excellent. We approve. <laughs> oh, wow. That is astonishingly rare. Just a tad. Only two of them left. In the world or the country? Country. In the country that we know. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> if you had it for long? 
Ah, yeah, it's it's two years. Years. Okay, quite a while then. It stays in the dry, obviously. Yeah, obviously, yeah. I wouldn't trust that roof to be very watertight. No. <laughs> it doesn't and come out in the rain unless. No, I don't blame you. There aren't many Strada convertible based emergencies that no, they could. No, exactly. Not the fifth, <laughs> the fifth emergency service. Um, Quick, yeah, call the Strada. Yeah, pull the Strada out. We've got to do a exactly. job. Yeah. Exactly. Like it's original. There's no welding on it. Whatsoever. Really? Wow. That's it's amazing. Got, it's, got, it's got a few battle scars in the paintwork. But it's yeah. all original. <laughs> That's yeah, good. Yeah, that one. All the one done uh, I, I, caught it, I caught it with a trolley jam. Oh no! Yeah, I was working on one of the other cars. I was doing this and it's like... Bonk! Oh no! <laughs> Wait, what? I need, to, I need to do that properly. Yeah. Oopsie. Sand it down, fill it and sand it. And fill uh, it but... I love the fabric. Uh, heavy <laughs> tweed stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It's got an amazing colour. It really is, isn't it? Wow. That's a cracking thing. I've said earlier, the thing I love about this show is finding cars, not going expecting to find a cool car, but turning up and finding cars you didn't know existed or was not expecting to. Mm. And this is just the epitome of that. This is how the boot works, which is really, really convoluted in Heath Robinson. <laughs> oh, look at that. Disappearing before. Oh, very eyes. And check this out. We've got three Toyota Tercel Sprinters. This one's a Carib, which means very nice metallic paint, I guess. And white wheels. It looks a lot like the one that was rescued from Malaysia last year. Not like rescued last year, but at the show last year. Four wheel drive Toyota loveliness. Oh, the 106 van. I never got to have a look at that. Oh, bravo. Now, ever since I've had a Brava, driven a Brava, I haven't actually seen another Bravo turn up anywhere. <laughs> McGann <Megane> Scenic. <coughs> I think we've actually managed to reach the end of the show. I wasn't sure this was ever going to happen. A very smart Audi. Come on, hey, see you later. Yeah, Bye. 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 A Mazda 121. Good lord. With a with a crab tree in it. And a Trabant 601S. Holy moly, there is so much to see and do. So much room for activities. Audi Club is here. Mini Club is here. Vauxhall. Lots of Mark III Cavaliers. These need to have their time in the sun. These are so good. Another Rover R8, which we know are brilliant cars. I love this really weird custard colour on this Audi. And it's a two-door. Wow. And it's a left-hand drive. Oh, it's on British plates, though. Okay. Very random. Uh, hello. hello. Is that yours? Yes. What on earth is it? Oh, it's an 80. It's an 80. Okay. 80cc, oh wow. Where's it from? Germany. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, that one, um, my granddad bought it. Oh, here. right, okay. So, is he German or is he in the army or something like that? No, 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 German. We're Ger I'm German. Oh, German, oh, okay. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. I don't think they made many over there. No. Uh, two door. No, it's a pretty uncommon thing. Yeah. I've, I've got a funny feeling they've probably made about a thousand altogether. That's astonishingly though for a, yeah. for a big production car and company I know in Hamburg I once we went to a, a car show and there was actually another one oh, okay same, wow same color wow more, <laughs> but that's the only other one I've ever seen I, I, love, I love the color I saw it custard <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Oh, it's cracking oh it's such a cool car I'm glad you kept it as well oh, yeah I'm quite attached to it yeah so I can imagine I I'll be getting rid of it no Oh, it's beautiful. It's quite a lot of miles. Now, yeah, part of the family. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Brilliant. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Is that walking on? Yeah, more. Vauxhalls. Vauxhalls everywhere. Ah, the 512 now thousand mile past the Picasso. Picasso! Which uh, has now been welded. Oh, yeah. So it has quite extensively welded down the sill. Um, Half a million miles in a small French people carrier. You could potentially do quite a serious crime and get less punishment than that. This looks far rougher in person than it does on camera. The door is quite horrible, 
the sill is quite horrible the paint is quite horrible um, there's bits of surface rust in all kinds of funny places who knows what's happened to that bumper just there <coughs> so yeah it is quite worn out but it's interesting it's running better than uh, Ian's, Ian's Berlingo but I just noticed as I was standing over here we've got an OBL and if you know my love of wire edge minis you know that an OBL means this is a press fleet car so this was borrowed or sent out to the journalists to test drive when the mini first launched if we have a quick look at this car we can look in the windscreen and this is I think oh, the 121st mini ever built it's quite nice in lovely condition bye Rover bye Citroen bye Audi off this Renault because I've never seen a car quite so heavily loaded down as that <laughs> so we have reached the end of the day the end of the festival and exceptional 2023 and the second traffic jam of the day is about to start as people make a mass exodus following the judging and it turned out a Daihatsu which had driven all the way from Sweden won first prize and it was a difficult decision because there were so many amazing cars but once again it's been an astonishing show and I'm so glad to be here in the little Punto which did amazingly and um, we're going to say that last year I drove here in my Volvo 740 used nearly a tank of petrol both directions this thing quarter of a tank each way I'm going to take this thing more places in the future and that thing is amazing with this Mercedes 2.5 litre diesel anyway thank you for watching like subscribe usual business see you later goodbye